Kia ora, koe Anthony Royal tēnei, e mihi atu nei, no mai, whakatau mai ki tēnei wāhanga he Whare Pākehi. Welcome to He Whare Pākehi, our house of business, where we make business simple. We'll meet some amazing people and talk about various ways whānau can start or strengthen their own businesses. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about how to structure your business. This week, we're focusing on a particular type of business, franchises. Nā kaupapa pakehi mō tēnei wiki is about what you will need to know about buying a franchise and the pitfalls. And we'll speak to one of the most experienced franchise experts and we'll meet a Māori who went into franchising and made a huge impression as a fastway courier in Tauranga. But first, I'd like to introduce my two manuhiri. Simon Lord is an expert in franchising with over 30 years in the field. He has worked in franchises big and small, both here and overseas, and set up the franchise New Zealand magazine in 1992, and five years later, created New Zealand's first franchising website. He joins us to share his knowledge, and along with him is Sally Knight, a colleague of Simon's. Now, Sally is one of the few people in the country to hold a certificate in franchising, which goes rather nicely with her Bachelor of Marketing. She's been working with franchise owners and operators for 14 years. A tēnā kōrua. So, can you just tell us a bit, how does franchising work? I think the, um, the best example, or best known example of a franchise would be McDonald's. So, let's use McDonald's as an example. When you go into your local McDonald's, you're not actually walking into a branch of a multinational corporation. You're walking into a small, locally owned business. Now, most people don't recognise that, because, of course, McDonald's has that huge brand, the Golden Arches, the television advertising, all the rest of it. So, so you're saying that each of those McDonald franchises are actually owned locally? They're actually owned and operated by a local business person or by a couple. By, have, by Kiwis? Who, by Kiwis, who have bought the right to operate that business from the McDonald's Corporation, have been selected for their ability to run it properly and trained in, um, in operating that business to the McDonald's system and using the McDonald's products. So, so Sarah, tell me, why are the, what are the advantages really of doing this? Why would you go into a franchise? Well, a lot of people use franchising as, a, as a, a good way to experience business for the first time just because of what Simon said. You get um, a, a great deal of training and support. Um, you're in business um, for yourself but not by yourself is the, the phrase so that's often used. So you get a lot used. of the training and support. Is a, so, so let's just get a couple of terms right first. Franchisee and franchisor, can you explain those terms? So we just get those right first. The franchisor is the person or the company who've originated and tested out and created the business, the business format, as we would call it in franchising, a system that actually is proven to work. The franchisee is the person who then buys the right to operate that in a particular location. Oh, so if we use the McDonald's um, uh, example, the franchisor is the big McDonald's company based in the United States, and the franchisee is the person who owns the local McDonald's store. That's Absolutely. correct, yes. Yeah. Now, are there disadvantages in owning a franchise as well? What sort of people suit it, and, and, and how, do, how do they get involved? I think um, the idea with, with a franchise is that if you are too independently minded, you will not enjoy working within a franchise. Yeah because you have to work within somebody else's system. If you own a McDonald's, you're not going to be allowed to go out and do home delivery pizza or to make up sandwiches or to your own recipe or whatever. You are going to be working within a system. So if you're an entrepreneur that likes to do lots of different things and experiment with things, maybe franchising is not, not the right way to go? That's Unless you right. want to be a franchisor, because the franchisor who um, sets the business up in the first place is probably more entrepreneurial in, in spirit than, um, than the franchisees who, who need to work within the system and not kick too hard against the traces, but follow the system the right way right. to succeed. So I think what you're describing is that you actually need different types of people to operate different parts of the business. So yeah, if you're absolutely. really entrepreneurial and come up with great ideas 
and you have an idea that you think is going to go global, then you want to be a franchisor. Yeah. If you're somebody who wants to operate, who's very good at managing people, uh, that's the kind of, you would probably prefer to become a franchisee. That's, that's yes. about right. Yeah. Mm. At, at the same time, you still have to have some entrepreneurial streak to be a franchisee, because if you are happy being employed, getting the regular paycheck or whatever, um, then you won't have the drive that you need to make a business of your own succeed. And that's one thing that you have to be very aware of, that when you are a franchisee, it is your own business. Nobody else is telling you to get up out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Nobody's going to go out and make those sales for you. If you don't make sales, there won't be any food on the table. So it's still truly your business? It's still very much your business. Now, so the franchisor will help you and support you and encourage you and motivate you and give you a kick up the bum sometime if you need it. But it, the ultimate success of the business depends on your own efforts. Right. Now, so we know the McDonald's model. Um, we, we know Whippy was one of the first. Is that right? Whippy was one of Mr. the first. Mr. Whippy would have been one of the first, first franchises in New Zealand, Zealand yes, okay. back in the 60s. So, so what else suits franchising? Give some examples of different types of franchises. Well, there's franchises in about 62 different industries around New Zealand already. So um, the, the sort of the, the thing that's getting more um, franchised by the minute at the moment would be services. So business to business services or business to customer services. What do you services. mean by, just explain business to business services? Well, you might have a product that um, businesses need to use to be able to, to work. Um, can think of so it's not selling food, it's, it's about working yeah, with businesses. Give us an with example businesses. of one. Speedy signs, for instance, okay, yep. you know, that's a, that's a business where the businesses need signage and so on, on their vehicles or their buildings or whatever and, and the franchisees for speedy signs produce those for other businesses mainly, also for, for end customers from the so public. It's not just you know, a product type thing, it could be a service type thing yep. like business coaching, it could be bookkeeping, accounting, yep. courier services, um, embroid you know, embroidered logos on shirts, anything like that. Um, so just one more before I talk about um, becoming educated in, in franchising. Um, is, is franchising growing? Is it, is it, um, are there more franchises being born every day or is it something that's, that's heading downwards? No, it's definitely growing. Um, throughout the world, franchising is still on an increase. It's slowed down a little bit as a, as a business model just because it's, it's almost reached traction at the moment, I think. Um, you know, you've, you've, you've had so many different industries that have discovered this model of growing their business that... Um, it's become very it's, successful. Yeah, it's become yeah. really successful for a lot of different sectors. So if somebody wanted to get involved in it, I mean... Is, are they training? You know, you've been uh, trained in franchising, is that right? Well, sadly, um, I was sadly. one of just a few people <laughs> who were able to take a formal training in franchising in New Zealand because Unitec started up a little um, a, a diploma and a certificate in franchising. Uh, this was at Unitec, was it? Yes, it was yeah. through Unitec. And, um, and there weren't enough people to, came along to, to take the course and they had to close it down. In Australia, there are, um, again, a, a, a similar diploma and certificate level qualification, but um, I think the New Zealand market may be too small to really stand um, formal education, and you've got to look out there for other ways other to... Other ways. So, so how to, would somebody find out more about this if they can't do it by going to a formal course? Yeah. How, how do they go about finding that? Well, you've got to find information through places like us, the Franchise New Zealand magazine and website. The we we and write websites. a lot of the, and information. And there are expos that people can go to? And there are expos, there are, um, you know, talk to people, um, definitely find other people, people who are, in who are already, already franchi working in a franchise, either as a franchisee or as a franchisor, and just try and find out as much as you can. And just one last question, Māori perspective on this. From your experience, how many Māori are getting involved in franchising? That's a very good question. I, d I don't think that franchisors really look at you know, whether, whether a good franchisee is going to be Maori or Pakeha or Chinese or South African or whatever. They look, and, uh, they look for people who have the necessary skills, the necessary aptitudes, the necessary abilities to take a business and really maximise its potential in a particular area. Um, there are certainly examples of Māori franchisors, people like Adrian Kenny, who founded uh, Green Acres, and later at your request. Um, and there are Māori franchisees like Bill Sampson, who's on later. Kia ora korua. Thank you for coming along and sharing this for with us. Kia mai. 
Katahuriaki Tato King Name, you need to think about if you're interested in owning or starting a franchise. And later in the show, we'll meet Bill Sampson from Tauranga, who won the 2010 Franchisee of the Year Award for his work with fast way couriers. Tēnā, kia u tonu mai.